in this video, I'm going to magically shrink myself like a trillion times smaller and I'm going to enter this atom. Let's explore what's in this tiny particle. Hi friends, I'm sure you've heard the word atom in chemistry. It's a very tiny particle. Here, I have a model of an atom. The real atom is so tiny that we can't even see it. Before I become really tiny and we go on a journey inside the atom, let me ask you, what does the word atom mean? It's derived from the Greek word atomos, meaning indivisible, because they thought that the atom is the smallest particle and it cannot be divided further. But now we know that's not true. Scientists such as Thomson, Rutherford and Chadwick, they discovered subatomic particles. I have a video on Thomson's and Rutherford's model of an atom. In this video, I compare the structure of an atom to a fidget spinner. So do check it out. All right, friends, wish me luck because I'm going to shrink myself like a trillion times smaller and we are going to go inside the atom. All right, we are inside the atom now. The atom looks mostly empty, hollow. Wait a minute, I can see some tiny particles spinning around here. There's also something in the center. This looks like a model of the solar system with the sun in the center and the planets spinning around it. Now let's look at each part in detail. The tiny particles spinning around the center are called electrons. These are negatively charged particles and they have a very small mass. The electrons were discovered by J.J. Thomson using the cathode ray tube experiment. Can you see that there's something in the center of the atom? Remember Rutherford's model of the atom? He called the center the nucleus. The nucleus is very tiny but holds almost the entire mass of the atom. So let's zoom into the nucleus and let's see what's inside it. As you can see, there are two types of particles in the nucleus. Protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged particles and neutrons are neutral. They have no charge. It's easy to remember. P for proton, P for positive. And neutron sounds like neutral. They have zero charge. Now, do you know what are the protons and neutrons collectively known as? That's right, nucleons, because they are in the nucleus of the atom. The protons and neutrons in the nucleus are much heavier compared to the light electrons here. The mass of each proton or neutron is approximately 2000 times the mass of an electron. So almost the entire mass of the atom is sitting in the nucleus here. The atom has this very heavy nucleus with the light electrons spinning around it. It's just like the solar system with a very heavy sun and light planets spinning around it. Now do you know what's in the space between the nucleus and the electrons? Again, it's just like the solar system. This is just empty space. It's just vacuum. But there was a problem with Rutherford's model of an atom. The electrons revolving around the nucleus would radiate energy. This means the electrons would lose energy and finally fall into the nucleus. So the atom would collapse. Then everything around us should collapse. But we know that's not true. The atom is stable. So Bohr proposed a new model of an atom to correct this. According to Bohr's model of an atom, the electrons can revolve only in certain orbits where they do not radiate energy. 
So the atom is stable. It's just like the solar system where the planets revolve around the sun in fixed orbits. So let's take a look at Bohr's model of the atom. The fixed orbits in an atom are known as electron shells. The shells are numbered starting from the innermost shell. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Or they are labelled using letters starting with the letter K. So it's K, L, M, N and so on. Now you may be wondering why do they start with the letter K? Why is it not A? Well, there's an interesting story behind this. I would encourage you to find it yourself. And do let me know what you found by putting it in the comments below. Now, let's say an atom has six electrons in it. So, how would you arrange the electrons in these different shells? Can we just put them randomly in any shell? The answer is no. There are certain rules for filling in the electrons in the shells of an atom. These rules are known as Bohr-Berry's rules. So let's go ahead and take a look at these rules. We will start with carbon. The carbon atom has six electrons. Let's fill in the electrons according to Bohr-Berry's rules. The first shell can hold a maximum of 2n squared. So that's two electrons. So let's go ahead and put two electrons in the first shell. Now how many electrons are we left with? We have four electrons. The second shell here can hold a maximum of 2n squared. So that's eight electrons. So we can put all the four electrons in our second shell. The second shell is the outermost shell and it doesn't have more than eight electrons. So these shells are following Bohr-Berry's rules. And this is the electron configuration diagram of carbon. We can write it in short as 2 comma 4 because the first shell, the K shell has two electrons. And the second shell, the L shell has four electrons. Next, let's look at chlorine. The chlorine atom has 17 electrons. Again, we'll apply Bohr-Berry's rules. The first shell can hold a maximum of two electrons. So let's put in two electrons in the first shell. Now we are left with 15 electrons. The second shell can hold a maximum of eight electrons. So let's fill in eight electrons in the second shell. And we are now left with seven electrons. The third shell can hold a maximum of 2n square. So that's 2 into 3 square, which is 18 electrons. So we can put in all the remaining 7 electrons in the third shell. The third shell is the outermost shell and it does not have more than 8 electrons. So Bohr-Berry's rules are being followed here. This is our electron configuration diagram of chlorine. And in short, we can write it as 2, 8, 7. Next, let's try calcium. The calcium atom has 20 electrons. This time, why don't you pause the video here and try to get the electron configuration yourself. So what did you get? The correct answer is 2, 8, 8, 2. Isn't it simply amazing that the design of the solar system and the atom are pretty similar. The solar system is this gigantic thing and the atom is a very, very tiny particle. But they both have a heavy center with light things revolving around the center. And the space in between is just vacuum. And do check out the full courses for physics, chemistry, biology, maths and computer coding on our website manuchaacademy.com. I'll put the links below. Hope you like it and happy learning.